Hello everyone and welcome to the Power of Music Thinking. My name is Christoph Zürn and this is the podcast for people with a musical heart and a wicked job. We're looking for stories, insights and tools from the big world of music to inspire leaders and followers to listen, tune, play and perform in whatever field you're operating. How cool is this? You develop a multisensory product to let people experience your ideas about music thinking and then someone comes along and uses your product for something completely different. Okay, before we dive into our conversation, let's first explain what are the jam cards because that's the product we're talking about today. The jam cards are a set of 38 inspiration plus six cue cards in the size of a 45 or single record. They're actually very big cards, approximately five times the size of a regular card deck. So if you take five cards, put them together, and then you have the idea from, hey, wow, that's one jam card. And all the inspiration cards have multiple triggers. For example, a keyword that sums up the essence of the card and an interesting key visual with music-related snapshots or excerpts from paintings from the Rijksmuseum. There's also a trigger question to spark and divert your thinking and an inspirational quote from musicians like Brian Eno, Jimi Hendrix or Frank Zappa and some non-musicians like Florence Nightingale or even Steve Jobs. So brilliant quotes that stand out and make you think. And very unique. Every card has a sound trigger. You can scan and hear immediately a specific song or sometimes also a spoken word on the Spotify platform. So the Music Thinking Jam cards, so they're an inspirational card set for change makers, pattern recognizers, innovators, transformers, and natural collaborators. Yeah, because we all need extra inspiration, use the jam cards to trigger your ideation session, co-create your purpose, define your design challenge or lay the foundation of your company's culture or brand story. So, and for over five years, the jam cards have been available from your local book dealer or online dealers like Amazon. So many creative sessions and brainstorms have been taken with them, but... Today we speak with Anita Prestich, an English trainer with experience in theater, directing and education. And when Anita picked up the cards, she had another idea of what to do with these cards and developed her own unique method. So, let's hear more about it. Welcome, Anita. Welcome to the Power of Music Thinking. Thank you. What was your first sonic experience or album, record album, or performance that had an impact on you? Yeah, I I have wrestled with this question since I first heard it, actually. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't say it's maybe my first sonic experience, but it's certainly the one uh, that comes to mind most frequently is um, my father had a collection of not a huge collection, a small collection of records, um, but I would listen to them over and over again. So like the Mamas and the Papas and John Denver and um, and some musicals, which I didn't think he was a musical guy, but he had some musicals. And um, I would listen to them ad nauseum and <laughs> <laughs> really embody them. So, And which yeah. one stood out? <laughs> um, yeah. I really liked Angel of the Morning. Oh, which was, I know this. Uh, yeah, um, completely inappropriate for a small child, but <laughs> um, I I loved it. So <laughs> I'm singing it over and over again. Angel yeah. of the Morning. Well, um, it, it's sung by. That's oh. a good question. Um, oh, we can look it up. So yeah, but, we'll but look if it you up. if you would remember, so so it's is it a song or is it? A... Yeah, it's a song. Um, 
So she says, just call me angel of the morning, angel. And so I think it's, you know, she's talking to him about the night, the morning after um, hooking up. Ah. <laughs> this is what I used to sing as a child. It's a very famous song, but I also forget. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. The only... The only other one would be Man of La Mancha. My mom uh, worked at a university, and so she told, uh, I think it was four, she took me to Man of La Mancha, and I. she was so embarrassed because I cried and I cried, but I loved it. Mm-hmm. So it was so <laughs> idealistic and tragic and, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember why you cried? What was, what, what, what made you... Um, I, I think it was just uh, sort of the exquisite, pain and beauty and tragedy that he had these dreams and he was um maybe not going to realize them but he was going to go after them anyway at least that's what i remember it's been a while since i've actually seen the show so yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) very uh, um yeah a strange child maybe but that's what i remember Oh, every every every, every <laughs> child is different. So, yeah. <laughs> and Man from La Mancha, I think it's even um, uh, they show it here uh, at the moment as well. So I think it's oh, do they? So it looks or it sounds like it's from all time. So it's like um, yeah. stories that, and also what you just said, visions. You mm-hmm. know, I think the windmills, right? Is it Don Quixote? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Don Quixote. Like windmills. Yeah, that's something that we also do or have to do. Or <laughs> yeah. It's and you don't necessarily go in because you're going to win, but you have to do it. <laughs> and there's love involved, so there. Yeah, sounds exactly. like they're universal, universal yeah. stories. Will you just um, yeah introduce yourself? What what, what do you uh, what do you do for a living? Sure. Um, yeah. So I mm, have been an educator in a lot of different capacities, and uh, during COVID, I realized that. Um, I needed to switch gears from music and theater a little bit, and I got certified as an English trainer for um, English as a foreign language, and I've been doing that for the last three years. And w- we spoke before, maybe half and half a year, and yeah. you, you explained me that you're using some interesting tools. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, my partner, um, who you also had on your show, Mike Vondernamer, uh, got a set of the jam cards. Let me see if I have yeah. the box here. Yeah, we yeah. have the jam cards. Um, I, because I was looking for something a little more creative um, to bring into my class, um, into the trainings, and I just found it absolutely perfect. So generally... What I do, and initially it was just a conversation starter. It's a common um, activity to have language learners describe a picture. Uh, It was certainly in my German integration course that I had to describe pictures and that sort of thing. Uh, But then I found that the questions and the quotes were really helpful in getting into a deeper conversation and not just the rote conversations that you learn when you're beginning a new language, um, which can also be helpful, but I think frustrating, especially for adult learners who are used to communicating on a different level. So it also created, um, I was looking for a really good framework. So it immediately made sense to me, the different pillars of listen, tune, play, and perform. And I thought, oh, that's exactly what I'm doing. And and with the jam cards, then I created a sort of curriculum. So I did my research and looked at the various uh, frequencies of the different words in the English language and that organized them using um, your... Uh, jamming and empathy. I started with empathy. A lot of people didn't necessarily have a good experience. Their first experience of learning a language was not necessarily positive. So I felt we really needed to start in an open um, uh, atmosphere. Mm. And uh, of course, we start with listen. Yeah, nice. (laughs) Yeah. So usually we define the word Uh, and try to create sort of a word cloud of everything that could be related to listen. 
Uh, and one-on-one -on -one sessions or is it a group? Yeah, these are almost always one-on-one -on -one ses sessions. Mm -hmm. I do work with a team and we have done um, workshops. And of course, with other platforms, I've done classwork. But generally, I'm working one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Mm -hmm. I would say would be more for conversation or it's just like how, how do we reach people out to you like from hey wow I had English in school and uh, yeah. I'm not using it too much can you help me or what kind of questions do they come Yeah to? so generally people understand a lot of the basics they got a lot of uh English in school uh as children and now in English is really the international language at the moment. And so a lot of people are finding that they just don't feel comfortable. They're having a difficult time transferring their expertise in their native language to English. They don't feel that they can have free speech, that um, they're really uh, nervous or they're not expressing themselves the way they would like. So this is a way I would say I minimum of three to four sessions, I would say just um, those 50, 45, 50 minute sessions. Uh, and so the first one is really all about listening and I'm. How do you, not, how do you do this? Hmm? So yeah. how, how would this work? So if, <laughs> if, if I would be your, um, your, what is it? Student and would say, yeah. okay, that's the first lesson. So how, how would we start? How would you explain this to me? Yeah, so our first lesson, I usually give them a little bit about my background. I My degree is in music and theater. And I also homeschooled um, my older children, as well as working in a special education school. So I'm very flexible in how I think about learning. Uh, but I also like structure. And I, as an adult learner, I want to see progress. I want to know that I'm improving and I want it to be efficient <laughs> because of course we want the skill now. So the first thing we do is um, we go to Spotify. If they have it on their phones, then they can listen to it. And how do they do? Do, do they understand that they can scan the code? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I explain, I'll, I'll hold it up. Um, otherwise, oftentimes we're in teams or something or zoom and they can scan it right off the uh, screen. I ask questions about the music. I ask questions. What do they hear? How do they think it relates to the word? Um, can they think of uh, a situation where they needed to listen? So it's, a little bit of a Rorschach test, but for mm. vocabulary, because mm. I just want to pull out um, most people, most clients say, I just can't think of the word in the moment. Mm. Good I, e yeah. Even if they're learning a vocabulary list, I can't think of it in the moment. And so I give them lots of opportunities to practice that skill of finding the right word in the moment. It's contextual, um, so like mm -hmm. getting into an into a situation, trying to find everything that connects to it, and then try right. to, to learn the words. And with listen, that's funny. There's a different word for so hearing. So mm -hmm. in 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 German, for example, it's uh, hören und zuhören. So so mm -hmm. then the listen part is only as a what is it a prefix? So so right. every, every language every language is uh, is, uh, is different and has its own context. Yeah, exactly, and. While we do conduct the majority of the meeting in English, I do think it's important to make those connections, those bridges to what you've already learned so that it just is more integral into your system. And there's different senses of listen that I'm, yes, I'm listening for things. I'm mostly listening for patterns. I'm not listening for every little mistake because even as a native speaker i make mistakes in english hopefully not a lot <laughs> um but our emphasis is really on communication and feeling that you're expressing yourself in the way that you want to yeah i think that's the most important thing not mm -hmm. trying to be uh too focused on being being perfect But just yeah. just make a conversation, just talk with people. And if it's the wrong word, and sometimes people help you and say, oh, I think you mean this. And oh, mm -hmm. I think 
that was the right word. So it's also yeah. just being also a little bit being open, mm -hmm. vulnerable to to say, okay, this is what I what I think and uh, how you can how you can help me. So yeah, me, exactly. it's really, really funny that you let's say found the the gem cards because yeah. in the beginning um, when when I created them. I never thought that they that you can use them for for English lessons. So that, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, f fantastic. When I when I heard that, this was mm -hmm. really cool. On the other hand, um, the gem cards are made. It's not a game, so there is no right. no, no nothing where you can work to. So it's actually more a creative tool. Mm -hmm. And just I also in the in the in, in in the top of the of the box there the the the, yeah. the the publishers ask me okay you can't just put the cards in the box you have to explain how it works and then I thought mm -hmm. how would this uh, work so <laughs> with something like a serendipity lab so right. sometimes in workshops when when uh, so let every everyone use headphones and then the, together they they scan them the 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 codes from from Spotify and the mm -hmm. idea is what you just said to find patterns and find yeah. patterns that you not have recognized yet, uh, yet pattern mm -hmm. between the music and the backside so F fantastic so yeah. so listening is your is your start this the start card. yeah so that's where we start and then i have them describe the picture and again some of them uh don't have a musical vocabulary so right away i can introduce the idea that it this is a good space to make mistakes mm -hmm. this is a good space not to know the answer um One, I would be out of a job if you knew all the answers, but also it's really about the process. How I think we learn is having that beginner's mind of, yes, let's make mistakes. And I really find it interesting when I see the patterns in mistakes and I say, oh, this is this skill is a little tricky for you. I know you know the theory, but let's figure out why you're not putting it into practice. And how we can do that. And that's individual um, for everybody. So, uh, and that's uh, really exciting for me. Uh, and once they understand that, I think um, most of my clients really get into say, oh, okay, I can make mistakes in this space. And I really like what you said about not being goal oriented. And that's really, sometimes it's a big ask for adult learners not to have a goal, especially in language. And of course, we all want to communicate, but m at least in my generation, there was a goal when we were taught language that we would get a certain number of vocabulary words, or we would get a certain grade on the test. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you want to transfer those skills that you had in school to a real live situation, that can be really it can really impede um the it, it can make people anxious and um they're having like three different thoughts not just what they want to communicate but am i communicating it in the right way oh i did the wrong grip oh ee, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so just by give, putting them in a situation where they don't necessarily know the words but of course they're listening to music i've been very pleasantly surprised. Um, I don't think I've had one person that says, eh, I don't really listen to music. They listen to something. Mm. Um, it may not be what I listen to, but they listen to something. And so I think that really adds um, a level of authenticity to our space and uh, even vulnerability, which I think you need if you want to learn a new skill. Absolutely, and and music is also a connector with empathy. It's also mm -hmm. easy to 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 use. It's easy to share. Um, mm -hmm. I recognized in in sessions that I'm doing that people talk about music, but later they realize, when hey, hang on, there is so much subtone uh, undercurrent uh, in it, but. Mm -hmm. Way we talk about music, we can share actually the way how we think and 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 how how we work. Yeah, exactly. And that goes back to really, I've been really interested in how we transfer skills, especially when people, not everyone, some of my clients were not good students, but some of them were. And 
how do we transfer that skill into a work situation? So we can talk about listening generally. Often we talk about our personal experience with listen, but then I always push them to consider how do we listen in this situation? How do we listen in that situation? If I just think about myself, um, uh, moving to Germany has been really interesting. There are times when uh, I just let the language wash over me, especially in the beginning, because I didn't understand that much and I couldn't hyper focus on every single word. And then someone will ask me a question and I have a stutter and I think, um, did they ask it in German or English? Hmm. How, which language am I going to answer in? If it's in German, do I really understand what the question is? And so on. And so I find in addition to that vulnerability, we also get to practice um, different kinds of focus. So are we hyper-focusing on just one speaker, on just one language? Mm -hmm. Are we focus is our focus diffuse? Or are we switching focus? Um, I've been interested in that visually as well, um, of just practicing switching uh, focus. And it's something that I certainly need to practice a lot. And I find that um, language and using the jam cards allows us to do that. Yeah, that's also in a way multi-sensory because mm -hmm. the cards, you can look at them, but you also can hold them in your hand or more of them in your hand, make nations. Mm -hmm. You can listen to it. And um, yeah, how, how does it work? Um, do do you do it online? So then the, the people don't have the cards. So you show the card. Yeah. So I do have a couple of clients that um, went out and got their own cards, oh, uh, okay. which is always fun. And because then they can really look through the whole stack and see yeah. what they like. Yeah. Uh, but generally I have a PowerPoint and then I have it as well, because I think it's important to notice the tactile. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that if, even if you're just watching someone else, then you can get a slight sense of, oh, we're touching something now. You can empathize and sort of, um, in in some way feel what they're feeling mm. yeah that's um to hear that they have the cards is very 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 nice mm -hmm. um and and for for all, uh, also in, in in the sense that they can find their their own story so that serendipity so that mm -hmm. not knowing a friend of mine he did a speech um for uh, for 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 his company and he used the jam cards so ah. And was holding one by one so guy and then it was about listening or entrainment and mm -hmm. he was using all these words and showed this and this was for people very nice it was then not a powerpoint in the background but mm -hmm. using cars cards and the gem cards and he was using them as prompts as well mm -hmm. so it's also like okay he, he knows w w what to what to talk about mm -hmm. so that's, uh, uh, yeah nice but but again so you start with listening with the listening card mm -hmm. and maybe we have to to share with people um the gem cards are um 38 plus six cards mm -hmm. the 38 cards um i i call them the yeah the, the prompt cards so they they have a picture mm-hmm They have a keyword, they have a oh, yeah. Spotify, uh, Spotify link on the backside. There's a question, a quote from a musician. Mm -hmm. Most of them are musicians. So yes, except for Steve, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. <laughs> and also, surprise um, me. Nightingale, the, the, the nurse. Oh, yes. Florence, Florence Nightingale. Nightingale. So, so, yeah. so sometimes I thought when preparing them, so um, when the quote was really, really, really perfect, so I thought... Mm -hmm. okay, It's also what I want with music thinking. It's not only about musicians. And that's mm -hmm. the idea. It's everybody can work with these cards or can work with music thinking. But mm -hmm. the thinking behind that comes from music. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, it helps you just to to do w w w what whatever you do. And mm -hmm. so th these are 38 cards and, and, and every card has its own story. Also the picture and the music. And there are six cards and they relate to, to, to the framework mm -hmm. like jam and empathy score agility remix and personality and some mm -hmm. combine with each other but the funny thing is um i did not give instructions for the cards because mm -hmm. i think 
let's let, let everybody use the cards how they how they want to use them i did uh arrange the cards using um i don't know what you call them the different um categories mm -hmm. that you have the so key. i did arrange them by that and then i went by word frequency and then sometimes also about the length of um the quote on the back or the vocabulary oh really um It, it it depends on uh, what level of language people have. If they're just starting out, um, we have to adjust it a little more. But if they're in the conversational level, then... Um, Is there a favorite yeah. favorite card or a card? You, you, you just said you always start with listening. So I would say... I that. do always start with listening. Um, I really like uh, activity. It's really interesting. It's, um, anytime there's not a super direct translation, of course, you can, yeah. um, uh, because English is sometimes, we can, of course, be very specific, but we also have a lot of terms for generalities. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about um, activity as a general term. Whereas in some languages, it's a very specific term. Um, whereas in English, we make it specific by adding something to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or just uh, bringing up words that they did hadn't necessarily considered in this context. That they had heard in one context and then we move it to another is really, um, I think, challenging. I always like it when it's a little challenging because then you know you're actually learning something wow. uh, with without being um, difficult or <laughs> damaging in some people's cases had very um, hard experiences in school. So I'm always how how can we find that sweet spot of it being enjoyable but still challenging? Um, talking about the the cards and the quotes in the in the beginning, mm -hmm. and I have to tell the gem cards they they are available worldwide uh, worldwide just in in the bookstore or Amazon. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in the beginning, I made um, on my blog uh, explanations about the gem cards, so mm -hmm. about where the picture is taken, and something yeah. about the music, and and I I stopped with it, so because I never got feedback, so I thought, okay, that's that's good um, mm -hmm. with the. But the, the the one, let's say the one page that has mm -hmm. most traffic on musicthinking.com mm -hmm. is the one about listen, but there's uh -huh. no reason. So I, I checked in the uh, in the analytics and it's about the quote of Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. That's on the back of the of the card. So knowledge yep. speaks, but wisdom listens. And that's that's really something people come via via this quote, and, and they want to know who said this quote. And it's in that way also very surprising that Jimi Hendrix, one of the biggest guitarists that yeah. ever lived, um, has this uh, has this uh, quote. Is there another? I have to. I mean, talking about the listen card, I have to say that is one of the best pairings because if you think about. I mean, would Hendrix be Hendrix without all that feedback from the sound system? Mm. And the idea of listening to the signal within the noise, which is maybe a little hard concept to understand in not your in a foreign language. But once you but once we get there, they think, oh, yeah, some uh, just like when I was talking about when I'm in a room full of German speakers, I don't necessarily try to listen to every single conversation. I'm just letting there be noise. So mm -hmm. it I really um have to applaud you for your choice of music um, for that card. Because <laughs> you really have to listen to hear his music through all the sound, yeah. Right. Yeah, sometimes um, I, I once had a workshop where someone came to me and said, oh, there's something wrong with the card because the um, it doesn't fit to the picture. Mm -hmm. And and for me, that's maybe the best compliment because um, I had some ideas why to put what music together with what picture, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's like a bit like a little bit thinking around the corner, and yeah. that, and actually the idea is not to understand to necessarily understand why I pick this, the idea is on what do you make out of it? And that mm -hmm. was um, the, the nice part when I asked him, uh, what would you expect then? And mm -hmm. that was 
even more interesting to to find out what, what uh, in, in this case he uh, would expect it um, the, what kind of music would be on the on the backside is there yeah. a part where people react like something like oh this music oh, that's that doesn't um, sometimes dolly parton which is a little hard for me because she's my go-to when i'm feeling homesick <laughs> 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 just because they're not country fans and i think oh you gotta listen to dolly she's such a good storyteller and um it's the best quote ever mm -hmm. it's like find out who you are and do it on purpose so talk exactly on purpose and then and i like all these purpose discussion sometimes in organizations it's mm -hmm. really like find out who you are and that's already that's already where mm -hmm. where you could go to so yeah well and it's super important when i'm talking to um teams that are trying to buff up their english so they can do that international um have international meetings and uh communicate that way because they really have to think what is the actual purpose of e of the meeting Uh, we talk about what is the purpose of your company? What is the purpose of the role? And when you can really distill that into words in your second or third language, that's mm. really powerful. That gives you, um, yeah, that gives you a power going into and a confidence going into any meeting that, yeah, I know why I'm here. I know what I can do and I know what I need to ask. Nice. Okay, so is there anything you would like to to point out or any maybe a story where it worked perfect or it went completely wrong? Mm, I would say I have had, let's see. I think everyone has been really pleasantly surprised. Um because I don't I have not yet included the jam cards on my profiles where I am um, and then they come to the first session and they say okay this is what we're going to do and they're like oh yeah maybe I'm going to be into this and so that's really uh gratifying um and there have been a few that I think maybe they just needed to use uh they just needed to work on their um grammar or they weren't quite ready to be vulnerable Mm. I'm happy for whatever uh, language level they're at, but if someone is feeling too self-conscious and not not ready to make mistakes, mm. not ready to see mm. where the road goes, if they're still in that um, section where they want step by step, I'm happy to help them tr uh, transition to a more open uh, way of communicating and thinking, uh, but not everyone's ready for that. And that's okay. Mm, nice. Nice. And any, any favorite card besides that? Do you always start with listening? Is there a card where you, mm. that resonates with you or maybe a, a disturbing one where you say, Oh, that kind of music is annoying me or <laughs> giving me questions. <laughs> Yeah, I maybe the model one irritated me a little bit. <laughs> okay, the model. I think the music yeah. is from uh, from Kraftwerk on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the um, the quote of um, Steve Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah, that was a Steve Jobs quote, uh, and yeah. and mostly just because I I think of model in so many other ways, and I felt like the music was really. Um, making me think in only one way uh people always see a different model in the picture yeah i i've gotten at least four different answers of what is the model in the picture mm -hmm. uh, which i find really fascinating maybe um, there are four or five models in the picture mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's always and yeah it's just interesting I get super, I always have to train myself every time I get a new client because I'm I'm just so excited to meet someone else and figure out how they think and how they learn it's, yeah. and hear their story. So that's it's nice. really and, exciting and for me. And the same thing and everybody sees something different. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, really enjoyable for me. <laughs> I'm very happy that um, it was very serendipitous to this whole journey. I have to say. Oh, that was the idea about it. 
Yeah, very good. <laughs> you have achieved it. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to share or or maybe ask um, about the cards? Um, maybe not about the cards. I'm really curious if any of your listeners actually have experience or know of an article or research that's being done between speech and song. Um, I think there might be a way to... I've I've read a couple articles about music uh, therapy, some from musicologists, some from linguists, but I think there's something there that could be really applicable to learning language. Absolutely. Um, so I would be curious if anyone had any suggestions no, for my next because I have to I have to keep learning too. If I get stuck, I I forget what it's like to to learn. So it, I love that journey. I can imagine that there that there's some some research, and I think we had it in one or two of the podcasts mm -hmm. where, um, um, where we talk about the, let's say the 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 um, that's the the intro question. What mm -hmm. was first memorable? Let's say the first song that you ever heard, and uh -huh. I recognized uh, this that some people really like a song and they they heard it when they're there very young and mm -hmm. but didn't understand the words and yeah. and, and later just thought oh my god that song is about this or that yeah. and, and i think that's that, that's an, an, an interesting part and mm -hmm. on the other hand some of the lyrics in music they are very vague so it's mm -hmm. like a poem or something associative that they and and it and that that, that it also just sounds good because mm -hmm. it's the idea of a song that you can sing with it and that it makes you feel in mm -hmm. a way and that words are maybe more than just what they yeah what they what they mean yeah i mean i think you'll find that a lot in poetry that's certainly been my feeling is that there is a rightness to some poetry and exploring that rightness gives you the meaning uh I'm I'm very curious of what I'm going to discover. Nice. And that's also the serendipity. So it's not about mm -hmm. what it really means, but it may be what it means to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Anita. Thank you for sharing your story and the, yeah, for me, incredible thing. <laughs> the cards that I've in, intended for creative interaction and serendipity. Yeah. Let me use it as a... Uh, well, oh. thank you for creating them. They've been really uh, a lifesaver. Um, I think any teacher would be happy, at, especially maybe high school or university level, Um You know, there are days when you can't plan everything and then you can just pull out the cards and say, let's ask some questions. Let's talk and have a conversation. It's like improvisation, just it is. or business improvisation triggered by patterns on, on cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get us out of our silos. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate this because listening is one of the top leadership skills and I feel honored about this. It is my mission to find, create and share inspirations for meaningful collaboration based on music analogies. If you want to support this, please subscribe to the podcast, give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Spotify. And more inspirations can be found on musicthinking.com. We have a blog and you can download the Music Thinking Framework. And finally... I would love to hear your feedback. And if you need help with a business challenge, please reach out to me via email podcast at musicthinking.com. <laughs>